What's up my plant lovers, Devin is back and today's video is all about sharing is caring. If you've been around for a little while, you have noticed that I love to do propagation because I just like to like make new plants for free. I know you probably do as well. But one of the things that's really cool is once you start to get a little bit better at it, um, it's really fun to share cuttings with other plant lovers. I know my sister, she lives in California. I live in Pennsylvania. She sends me cuttings. I send her cuttings. It's really fun to do. So if you've ever wondered how to kind of pack up cuttings in order to send them to uh, family or friends, or maybe you found someone online on Instagram or YouTube and you wanted to uh, exchange cuttings, well, this video is all about showing you guys how to do that. Also, it's fun to like, you know, material items, plant life, you're going to a birthday party or a wedding, why not bring some cuttings? So while this video is kind of catered to like shipping, um, it can also work perfectly well for taking some cuttings with you on an airplane ride or on a road trip. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and um, so that you can feel confident that your cuttings will arrive in the right shape, right, uh, so that your cuttings will arrive perfectly and ready to be propagated. Okay, so we know by now that different plants have different methods for propagation. So that's the first thing. If you have a plant that you want to send a cutting, you need to know how that plant is propagated in order to take the correct cutting to then ship out. So a couple of the plants that I'm gonna be demonstrating here today, beautiful begonia, and this is an awesome uh, peperomia. Check out this peperomia. Cute, I think it's peperomia maculosa. And then also we have this begonia. This is a Rex begonia. And I'm showing these two because these are both beautiful to be propagated by just a single leaf. So it's really important if you don't if you don't have experience propagating that plant, do a little research online prior to make sure you're gonna be taking the cutting the correct way. Because like, if I had, uh, if I wanted to send a cutting of my Monstera adansonii and I just took a single leaf, it wouldn't be successful. So what's the point of having a cutting arrive in perfect shape if you can't actually propagate it? So, okay, first things first, let us take our cuttings. You can see I have my scissors, sitting in a little mildly diluted bleach water solution. Why do we do that? Because we want our cuttings to be fresh and clean. So I'm gonna just do a little dip between plants to make sure that my scissors are perfectly in shape and ready to go. Okay, first thing you need to know about taking a leaf cutting, for instance. So you can see on my begonia, I have different sizes of leaves. I have some small, medium, and large. And the thing that you want to do is the larger ones, which are obviously in this case, um, the oldest leaves on the plant, they're going to have kind of like the least amount of energy. They're also a little bit large, get damaged more easily. The small ones are great, but they're so small that they can also get damaged easily. So we want to go for kind of like that, that teenager, uh, <laughs> the teenager leaf, which is kind of like the middle of the range. Um, a, a leaf that is large enough that you can easily propagate. It's, uh, small enough that you can easily pack it up. And so for me, I think that I will pick, let's see which ones do I wanna pick. Oh, I need to turn this baby around. Sorry, Samantha, for moving the camera. I think I'll go with this guy right here. So another thing you wanna think about is the length of the stem that you're gonna be taking. Because you're shipping, um, we wanna to try to get like a two to three inch long uh, stem that's gonna help our packaging process go a little bit easier. Okay. So now that we have the nice like three inch stem, I'm gonna cut it down as low as I possibly can. Look at this beautiful flower This opened up actually just today. Isn't that gorgeous? I didn't know Rex begonias could have such pretty flowers, uh, but in fact they do. Okay, so I have my begonia leaf cutting. Now, a lot of the, a few of the plants that I'm gonna be demonstrating here, I have videos on my YouTube channel on how to propagate them. For other ones that I don't have videos yet, like this begonia and like this peperomia, you can rest assured that those video videos will be made after um, I am able to start these propagations, okay? So then, let me put this guy aside. So then the same thing is true with our peperomia. 
Um, like I was saying, I believe Peperomia maculosa. If you know better than I do, please leave a comment below. Um, this is such a gorgeous, huge leaf, uh, Peperomia. So like I was saying, I'm not gonna take the largest leaves. This is much more likely to get damaged. I wanna take a little bit of a smaller leaf. And um, one of the awesome things is that when we're doing propagation from a single leaf like this, it doesn't matter if the leaf is damaged. Like look at this leaf. It's, not as, it's definitely not the prettiest on the plant, but when we're actually propagating it, um, it's gonna create a brand new plant. So propagating with like damaged leaves is actually an awesome thing to do. So I'm gonna go with this one right here. So I'm gonna go down just as low as I possibly can and cut it off just like that. And while I'm here, I may as well cut a couple of these watermelons off as well. Why not, right? So the reason we wanna get the longest stem possible is because when we're actually gonna go and do the propagation, we're gonna cut part of this off anyway. So it actually just makes the actual propagating easier if we start with a longer stem now. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so now I have my three leaf cuttings that we're gonna pack up here in a minute. I also wanna show you guys something that we can do with stem cuttings. So here I have a philodendron and I have a tritiscantia. Neither of these would propagate if I were to just cut off a single leaf. So let's see what we're gonna do with these. Okay, so when it comes to the philodendron and the tritiscantia, these are gonna be propagated uh, by the actual stem, being replanted that's how we are going to do it today you may have just you may have seen previously my video on how to propagate these so what i'm going to actually do i'm going to actually just destroy this plant for educational purposes um, but i'm going to regrow it so it's not actually destroying right okay so i'm actually just going to take everything out of this container came out okay so let's start with the triscantia I'm just gonna start by kind of shaking off all of this earth all the dirt Okay, so now we made it to our pink princess. Now I'm gonna start just simply cleaning this off as well as I possibly can. Now the pink princess can actually be um, propagated from every single node. So the nodes would be basically where these leaves uh, emanate from. Likewise, they can also be propagated from this bottom section. If you have these roots coming out as well as a little bit of the top growth, that section is also very easily propagated. Okay, so now I just went and I rinsed off the roots so you can see they're a lot cleaner right now, easier to see. So the first thing that we're gonna do before we start to actually pack them up is we're gonna trim back some of the roots. Um, we're gonna start with smaller propagated materials and so we don't need quite as many roots trim some of that off but not only am I going to trim some of the roots off because we are packaging them up I want to make it as easy and transportable as possible with the least amount of damage so I'm going to remove the majority of the leaves I'm definitely going to leave a few but I want to remove um, probably 50 to 75 percent of the leaf material now if you know anything about Tratiscantia it's one of the easiest plants to propagate um, they're absolutely a dream to propagate. Super, super easy. Okay, and I'm uh, as well as cutting off some of those leaves, I'm going to remove some of these side growths because it's going to help me to package it up. You want to think about creating something that is going to be very easily packaged into a box. And this is much easier than it was with all that extra growth. This is much, much more manageable to put in the box and ship out. 
Okay, and finally, let's do the pink princess, easily the most precious of the group. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I wanna turn this into two cuttings. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut just across the middle. Okay, so I have this one. You can see it has nice roots. I'm also gonna trim these back just a little bit. It'll be easier to package up here in a minute. You'll see exactly what I mean and why. Now, not only am I gonna trim some of the root material off, but I am going to trim off all but one of these leaves, okay? Let's see which one will be easiest with that. So let's keep this one. We're gonna cut off these two. All right, so you notice I was trying, because a box is square, this is kind of an awkward shape. I wanna be able to kind of go like this. So this is gonna be the best leaf to keep. And then with this guy, remember the bottom, we're gonna remove the lower leaves, as well as this one. And then we're gonna keep this. This is a gorgeous node. You see, when I was talking about nodes, this is the perfect example of a node. When we are finally able to plant this, this is where the roots will actually come out of, okay? So now I have taken all of my cuttings. Let's get to packaging them up. Okay, so we are gonna start by packaging up our single leaf cuttings. So what I have here is some damp, um, damp paper towels. What we're gonna do first and foremost, we are going to wrap the stem and absolutely that bottom part where we cut off, we're gonna wrap them in this damp paper towel. It's damp to the touch, it's not sopping wet by any means. Now you'll notice I did not touch the leaf. That's very important to note. We don't wanna wrap the leaf, only the stem and that bottom section, okay? Now once we have that wrapped, and our paper towel, we're gonna to take some plastic wrap and wrap that paper towel in the plastic wrap. Now this plastic wrap, now this plastic wrap is going to help keep the moisture locked into that paper towel. So it's really important. We wanna cover all of the paper towel really well. We don't want to have any exposed because we want, you gotta imagine, this is gonna be wrapped up like this for three to five days, hopefully less. So we wanna make sure that the paper towel stays moist during the whole time. That's why we wanna make sure it's really well covered. Now you can use like a little rubber band, like I have here, or I also like to use like little twist ties as well. You can use one of each. Okay, so here's one. And the same exact thing with the pepperoni. Actually, I think that I am going to use just normal tape. Okay, so when it comes to the cuttings with roots, it's so important. We know that if roots dry out, they become very, very unhappy. You really need to ensure that the roots get covered with that moist paper towel and that the idea is to make sure that they remain moist on their entire journey until they make it to their destination and can get repot, replanted up, okay? Chances are you're gonna be, if you are shipping cuttings to friends, to family, you're probably using a plant that's special to you, that maybe was expensive or rare. So take your time with this process, don't rush it. 
We all know plants don't like to be rushed. Now, and one last, this one's a little bit different. It doesn't have roots and it's also not uh, kind of like a, a single leaf stem, but those areas where I pulled the leaves off earlier, I wanna keep those moistened as well as the bottom. So I will also be wrapping this bottom section with our wet paper towel. Okay, so I have my Rex Begonia in its labeled plastic bag. I sealed it just about 95% of the way. It's gonna allow a little bit of airflow to continue. Um, likewise with my Travis Cantia and the Pink Princess. And so when you're just placing it in, just do it as gently as possible. You don't need to, like I was saying, don't see, you don't need to seal all the way, just about to the end. It's gonna be the best scenario. So I got the Tupperware into the bag and I have written on the front, live plants, no direct sun. Our awesome delivery men are generally pretty good about following the directions. So I always write that on, just gives me a little bit of extra, you know, security blanket feeling so that they won't let them sit in the hot sun drying out. And the final thing to do is to send them express. Because these are important, cut, important cuttings, you want them to arrive in the best shape, spend a little bit of extra money and have them delivered express. Within about three days, they should arrive at their destination. We're talking about continental United States. So that's what we like. With all that in mind, you can start to form some plant friendships. Send your cuttings out to random people that you meet online. I know I've done that before, and it's a really fun way to make new connections. Send them to your friends and family. Spread the plant love. That's what we are here to do. Anyways, I hope you found this video a little bit informative. I hope maybe it's gonna help you push your boundaries, get outside of your comfort zone, try something new, and uh, to spread that plant love. So thank you guys for watching today. Please stay tuned. I will show you guys what to do with the cuttings once they have arrived over these next few months, how to get those peperomias and begonias and philodendrons all planted and propagated up nicely. Thank you for joining me here today. Um, I hope this has kind of given you some new inspiration, maybe step outside your boundary zones, spread that plant love, make some new friends, share some cuttings, receive some cuttings, and do a little bit more propagating. Thanks for joining me here today on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you guys soon. Ciao.